if you have a Ford CD4E automatic gearbox and you want to service it or change its oil, then this is the video for you. Now the uh, car featured in this video is a um, Ford Mondeo Mark III, uh, but the CD4E automatic gearbox was used in a number of Mazda and Ford vehicles, uh, including the Mazda 626 back in the 90s, the Mazda MX-6 late 90s, the Ford Probe, Ford Contour, Mercury Mystique, uh, the European Mondeo like this one, Mercury Cougar, uh, Ford Escape, Master Tribute, Mercury Mariner. And the gearbox and setup is uh, more or less identical in all of those cases, uh, so long as uh, the gearbox has an external oil cooler, which most of them did, then you'll be able to follow the same procedure that I show you here. First thing you'll need to do is lift or jack your car so that you have access underneath it and you'll also need access to the oil cooler hoses uh, which uh, may involve removing an under tray like this black, black plastic one here which you can see I've already taken off this Mondeo. Okay with regard to the new oil um, you will read a lot of outdated information on the interwebs uh, suggesting that you do not use uh, Mercon 5 and that you should stick with the old uh, mineral-based uh, Mercon 3. Um, and the reason for this is that Mercon 5, when it first was released by Ford, uh, gave the CD4E some problems. Uh, however, they revised their specification, and the latest uh, recommendations from Ford is to use Mercon 5. So uh, this is what I have here. It's an Australian oil which uh, meets the Mercon 5 spec. I have uh, two by four liters uh, of it, uh, which is roughly the uh, appropriate volume for the uh, technique that I'm going to use here. Uh, you want somewhere between eight and ten liters of quartz. And I also have a uh, large oil catch tray, uh, which uh, conveniently has a um, gauge on it, which reads up to eight liters. Okay, now let's get under the car and familiarize ourselves with the uh, gearbox that we're going to be working with. Uh, this thing's mounted to a uh, Ford Duratec HE 2 liter petrol engine, but that doesn't matter. As I said, the gearbox is um, identical regardless of uh, what it's plugged into. Um, you can orient yourself with this uh, black painted valve cover. We're not going to be working with that, but uh, just so you know where things are in relation to it. If you go from there back along the underside of the gearbox at the rear end, you will find a square socketed drain plug and we will be working with that today. And if you look around your car's main radiator, you should find the uh, transmission oil cooler. If it's not obvious where it is, then uh, you can follow the uh, hoses from the gearbox itself, which is a little bit hard to see in this shot. But any, in any case, at some uh, location, you'll find these two hoses which run together right here. And uh, we will be working with these because one of them will be disconnecting in order to uh, drain the majority of our oil out. Before we worry about that though, we are just going to uh, drain the oil out of the transmission sump uh, by undoing that uh, drain plug that we just looked at. In order to do that, you need a 3 8 square um, socket driver. So I'm just going to use this little uh, ratchet handle here and just plug it directly into the drain. So put your oil catch can underneath the transmission, obviously, uh, ready for all the, all the oil. And then work out an orientation that works for your ratchet handle or breaker bar, whatever it is you're using. And um, get that drain plug undone. And uh, once you pull it out, you will get a uh, reasonable volume of oil come out of the sump and you're going to let that drain. Uh, you should expect to get about three liters or three quarts out um, on the, uh, you know, immediately as you drain it. Um, if you're able to leave the car set for any length of time, for, you know, overnight for example, then you should expect to get quite a bit more out. Now this is a good opportunity, take that drain plug to one side and uh, get it under some good light and inspect it for um, any problems with your transmission. It is a magnet and um, if there's lots of uh, you know, worn bits of metal, metal shards, 
then that would indicate you know serious wear in the gearbox. Uh, in this case, there's a bit of sludge, uh, which is still wear, but it's not very bad at all. So this looks pretty good. So um, once you're done with that, you need to clean the drain plug, uh, ready for replacing back into the um, into the drain plug socket. Obviously, uh, this is brake clean that I'm using here, and you'll also need to use a, um, a nylon or a soft wire brush to clean off the old thread sealant. Um, which we will be replacing, but you need to get rid of the old stuff first, otherwise you're asking for um, problems with leaks. And this is just a, a little demo of the magnet doing its job, so you can see how that um, will scoop up uh, metal bits and pieces. Now we need to uh, replace the thread sealant on the uh, drain plug before we replace it. Uh, you need a high temperature thread sealant. There is a, actually a um, particular Ford specification, which I'll list uh, in the description. Uh, either Loctite or Permatex are the two uh, common and popular brands for this, but it doesn't really matter so long as it meets the spec. The correct application is to do uh, somewhere between three quarters and a full turn of uh, just a single thread. That's all you need to do. Don't do any more than that. It would be um, too much. Uh, this drain plug is a uh, tapered thread fitting. It's it's not like a um, oil sump plug, which typically have their own little washers built into them. Uh, this so this thing relies on the sealant, so you have to get this stage correct. Otherwise, you'll um, you you should expect leaks. So uh, try to make sure the um, the socket thread is uh, as clean as possible before you go putting it in. Use a rag, get up in there with your finger as much as you can, and then um, screw it back into place. And then get your ratchet, and we're going to do it up tight again. The uh, forward specification for torque here is 27 newton meters if you have a torque wrench. And you can see here how that one little bead of uh, thread sealant has made its way all the way down all the threads of the plug and uh, has formed this little, um, little uh, sort of circumference of excess here. So, uh, you know, this is a good sign that we use the, uh, the correct amount. So what we have now is an empty uh, sump and uh, you need to take a note now of how much oil you actually got out of it and you remember we looked at it before and it was about three liters and now it's nearly five liters and that's because i left this car for almost uh, 24 hours uh, dripping overnight and got this much more so we're now going to put back into the sump new oil uh, of the same volume now to add oil to the transmission we use the filler tube which doubles as the dipstick tube so you need to remove the dipstick, which is the uh, yellow handled thing at the uh, rear of your engine bay. Uh, now the dipstick, you need to try to uh, make an effort to keep clean. Uh, here I'm cleaning it with a rag as I pull it out, and then I'm keeping the rag wrapped around it as I store it, because I don't want dust and stuff to uh, settle on it. Uh, the reason for that is transmissions are so sensitive to uh, any sort of debris or detritus that, get, that, you know, that gets in them that uh, you want to be careful not to go getting anything on your dipstick uh, before you go putting it back in your nice clean oil. And we will need a uh, funnel with a long neck or a long throat. It needs to be long enough to uh, securely uh, you know, reach down and fit inside the top of the uh, filler tube while the, um, the actual funnel itself can uh, securely be uh, placed somewhere where you're not going to you know, spill oil. And uh, again, as you can see here, I'm uh, making 100% sure that there's no dust or anything in the funnel that I'm going to use. And this funnel also has a, a filter built into it, a little you know, mesh thing just to stop stuff getting down into the transmission, which would be bad. And then we uh, go right ahead and add the replacement transmission fluid, again, to the same volume as what we know we've already taken out of the system. Or, you, you know, it could be a little bit more. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Uh, just so long as you don't overfill the sump and um, you know you don't want oil spilling out the top of your uh, filler tube. Now with that done we have uh, replaced the oil in the transmission sump but only to the tune of somewhere between three and five liters and the, uh, the the CD4E transmission holds much more oil than that so we can get more old oil out of the system and to do that we're going to disconnect this uh, oil cooler hose now the one that you want to use is the um, outflow hose, which is the one closest to the engine, or the one on the right hand side of the car. So you need to uh, undo its uh, hose clip, clamp, and then you need to uh, get the rubber hose off the uh, metal fit, uh, fitting here. Uh, if it's really stuck, then uh, using a hot air gun can help loosen things up. 
and um, once you've got it off you need to um, position the hose in such a way that it is pointing at your oil catch can because it will be uh, spewing oil out into it in a minute. I was able to just uh, hook mine around the bar of the uh, subframe here and it was it rested there quite happily pointing in the right direction. Now what we're going to do is start the engine and we are going to allow the transmission pump to pump oil out and then we're going to let the uh, pump run until we have oil out of the system which has gone up to a total level equal to the amount of new oil that we are putting into it, in this case 8 litres. Now this is uh, safe to do um, because the gear train is not being engaged. So uh, even though it's not getting oil back from the oil cooler, which is what it would normally be, be getting, uh, that's okay because it's uh, simply not being actually used so long as we keep the car in park or neutral and um, obviously we wouldn't go engaging the gears for any reason at this point. So once we reach the desired level of old oil output we uh, shut the engine off, that shuts the transmission pump off and then we are going to reattach the hose, uh, do its clip back up and uh, just so you understand what's going on at this point, so what will have happened now is the um, oil sump, which we just refilled a minute ago, um, will now have, you know, it will have been depleted once again. So uh, this is where, of course, we go and add the rest of our new oil. And um, once we've done that, we will have a situation where we've drained 8 litres of old oil and add, added 8 litres of new oil. And that's not a 100% replacement of the transmission's oil. It's uh, closer to sort of, you know, two thirds or maybe three quarters. Um, but that's pretty good. And it's uh, all that we can do without using a, uh, you know, professional transmission flushing machine. So once you're done with adding oil, remove the funnel, replace the dipstick. Again, make 100% sure that it's uh, as clean as you can make it. And at this point, uh, we're going to be ready to start the engine again and uh, let it run for a few minutes. It'll start to warm up um, and take the opportunity at this point to jump back under the car and inspect everything for any leaks. That's the um, oil cooler hoses that you expect, you know, the one that you disconnected and obviously the drain plug. Check that there are no leaks. Then uh, once you're happy that there are no leaks, uh, it's time to uh, check the oil level. Uh, transmission oil level is a very sensitive thing. Um, the CD4E transmission has a, a particular procedure that you follow and ideally the transmission is at full operating temperature, uh, which in this case it isn't, but this, it's, you know, it's close enough that we can check the approximate level and fine tune it later. Uh, what you need to do is jump in the car, put your foot on the brakes, obviously so the front wheels don't turn, and just go through all of the gears, leave it in each gear for a few seconds, reverse, neutral, drive, and then um, the, you know, the lower two gears as well. Back up through, put it back in park, and then go check the level on the dipstick. Now, uh, transmission oil expands um, considerably with heat, which is why they want you to have it all at full operating temperature when you do this. So to the extent that you're in, your system's still cold, you need to sort of correct for that. So you should expect to see a relatively low level on, on the dipstick. Uh, which is to say that it should be at the lower end of the hashed area. And in this case, it looks like it is overfilled. So uh, this kind of sucks. This will be a consequence in my case of either an inaccurate uh, level on the oil tray, that one that measured eight liters, or they, um, the, you know, the four liter containers of new oil that I bought actually had slightly more than four liters each in them because the manufacturers are so generous. Uh, in either case, this is what I get for um, not measuring things more accurately. So now I need to remove some oil from the transmission before I can uh, safely drive the car because an uh, overfilled transmission is um, basically as bad as an underfilled one. So I'll just show you how I do that. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't want to have to uh, remove the drain plug again because that's a pain in the butt and you would also lose the entire sump of oil. Um, in, the, in this case, we only need to remove, you know, 100 or 200 milliliters at a time. So uh, what I have here is this um, plastic um, pump, which is off a uh, hand soap container. And I also have this length of PVC tube, which uh, happens to be sized in such a way that it fits over the um, pipe of this pump and uh, jams on there and makes a nice seal. And the tube is of a length, which is such that I can uh, get it down through the uh, filler tube of the transmission. Uh, I can get it into the sump and then I just pump it out. 
into a container. Uh, like I said, 100 or 200 milliliters at a time is safe. And then you just uh, redo the measurement, recheck the transmission fluid level until you get it toward the uh, low side of the hashed area on the dipstick. And uh, that is about perfect. Um, although again, I suggest that you, uh, once you've driven the car for a while and you get it up to full temperature, that you redo this and uh, make sure that you're not exceeding the upper level. Speaking of which, good time for a test drive. So what you want to be doing is a, uh, some kind of highway speed, 100 km an hour, 60 or 70 mile an hour, and um, overdrive off, but then turn it, overdrive on, sorry, and then turn it off, and it should shift down into it, and then put the gear stick all the way back into first, below 80 it'll shift into second, and at 50 it should shift, downshift into first, like that. Now we're in first gear. Shift up in a second, it'll drop up in a second. As we go around here, what I'm going to do is pull the accelerator. And, shift. and uh, obviously, the um, upshifting as you accelerate should be uh, equally nice and smooth from first all the way up to third and then into overdrive. Then uh, all that's left to do is to get rid of the old oil. You can uh, pour that into whatever waste containers. I'm using the uh, new oil containers here. And then you can take that and you dump it somewhere um, like a, um, auto stores usually have um, waste oil collection bins that you can use. Okay, I think that pretty much covers everything. Uh, you'll notice, by the way, that there was no transmission oil filter featured in this video. And that's because the CD4E filter is uh, located um, deep in the gearboxes in it and you don't really replace it unless you're rebuilding it so no need to worry about it when you're just doing a uh, oil change service like this one. Right so I hope this was helpful for somebody. Have fun out there.